the history of the death penalty in Mississippi. From 1804 to 1940, all executions in Mississippi were carried out by hanging. The first execution by electrocution took place on October 11, 1940. From then until 1952, the electric chair was moved from county to county for 75 executions. Inmates were executed by lethal gas from 1954 to 1989. In 1984, the Mississippi legislature amended the state's death penalty statute to provide for lethal injection for all individuals sentenced to death after the law went into effect. Inmates sentenced prior to the change were still executed by lethal gas. In 1998, lethal gas was removed as an option. In Mississippi, when the prosecution seeks the death penalty, the sentence is decided by the jury and must be unanimous. If the jury recommends death, it is required to record what it considers the aggravating circumstances about the crime that led it to that decision. In case of a hung jury during the penalty phase of the trial, the judge issues a life sentence, even if only one juror opposed death. The power of clemency belongs to the governor of Mississippi. The state of Mississippi used hanging as its method of execution for much of its history. From the earliest recorded execution in 1818 to 2004, Records indicate that the state executed a total of 794 people. Of these, the great majority were black males, who account for 639 of recorded executions. Around the time of the 1901 opening of the Mississippi State Penitentiary in Parkman, Sunflower County residents, objected to having executions performed at MSB because they feared that Sunflower County would be stigmatized as a death county. Therefore, the state of Mississippi originally performed executions of condemned criminals in their counties of conviction. When, in 1940, Mississippi's state legislature decided to change the state's method of execution to electrocution, while continuing to conduct executions in the county of conviction. A portable electric chair was developed and fabricated for the state's use. On October 11, 1940, the state's first execution of a condemned prisoner by electrocution occurred. Willie May Bragg, a man convicted of murdering his wife, was electrocuted in his county of conviction, Jefferson Davis County. Interestingly, on the same day, Mississippi also carried out their final hanging in a different county when Hilton Fortenberry, another murderer, was put to death in Sharkey County. The state moved the electric chair from county to county using it to kill condemned prisoners in their counties of conviction. One such example was Houston Roberts, a white man convicted of poisoning his granddaughter in Jackson. Mississippi and Louisiana were the only U.S. states to use a portable electric chair. Around the 1950s residents of Sunflower County were still opposed to the concept of housing the execution chamber at MSB. In September 1954, Governor Hugh L. White called for a special session of the Mississippi Legislature to discuss the application of the death penalty. During that year, a gas chamber serving as an execution chamber was installed at MSB. The gas chamber replaced the portable electric chair which, between 1940 and November 10, 1954, had been moved from county to county to execute condemned prisoners. 
The final execution in a portable electric chair was that of James Johnson, a white man convicted of murder, was executed in the Simpson County Courthouse, where, as was customary in Mississippi at the time, the executioner placed the chair in the same courtroom where the jury had convicted the condemned man. The first person to die in the gas chamber was Gerald Igliego, who was executed on March 3, 1955. If you were driving on the highway on the wrong day in Mississippi, you'd have seen an electric chair in the back of a silver truck. Alongside it was a switchboard, cables, and all the materials needed to execute someone. This was a new device that would replace hangings, going from prison to prison, like some dystopian band on tour. One could argue the executioner deserved to sit in the chair himself. He was Jimmy Johnson a drunk ex-marine carnival performer who had a long criminal history. He'd committed various assaults and robberies. His most egregious was his shooting of a neighbor for insulting his wife. Yet Johnson's lawyer argued that the shooting was justified, because of an unwritten southern law that seemed improvised on the spot. The invisible law said a man could shoot another man to defend a woman's body or personal reputation. The court accepted his defense. He walked out of the courtroom that day without consequence. Johnson happened to be friends with the governor, Paul Johnson. They had gone on several hunting trips together and rubbed shoulders with a seedy crowd. Mississippi had a number of legal issues and bad press with its executions. Journalists began to question if their executions were just a form of legalized lynchings. The state thought switching to electric chairs would solve that and put out a bid for a new device which Johnson promptly won. This is perhaps the most dystopian twist of it all. When Johnson arrived with his electric chair, it wasn't quietly put into service. The state unveiled it at a state fair like it was a new iPhone that consumers would get in line to buy. Johnson traveled throughout Mississippi, charging $100 per execution, which amounted to $2,000 in today's dollars. The state had a growing reputation for botched executions which, sadly, wasn't fixed by this chair. Willie May Bragg was taken to be executed by another electric chair and it only partially shocked him, ending with him screaming to turn it off. Rather than grant Willie an appeal, the prison quickly looked for a plan B. The state was eager to test their new portable electric chair and send it to the prison without delay. The second execution attempt didn't fail. In September 1940, the portable electric chair was ready for a public unveiling in the state capitol at Jackson. Thompson arrived, set up his grim equipment, tripped the generator, on the 7th of October 1940, the crowd saw a large silver truck, a portable generator and a sturdy chair with helmet straps and electrodes. No less proud of his chair than the black cat, snakes, and strawberries tattooed on his velvety skin. Willie May Bragg was convicted of murdering his ex-wife in Lucidale. With the state eager to demonstrate its new method and Bragg is inspiring no sympathy among appellate judges, it came as no great surprise that he was first in line. His execution date was the 11th of October 1940. May Bragg expected to die but didn't know he was about to make state and penal history. He would be the first man ever to die in a portable electric chair, with May appeal denied, his execution was assured. 
Thompson arrived at the Lucidale Courthouse on the 10th of October to set up what he dubbed my killing machine. After a few necessary tests to make sure everything was ready, Willie May Bragg was prepared to make history. As it was, their concerns were groundless. Thompson set up his job, the portable electric chair worked perfectly, and Willie May Bragg died as quickly and cleanly as he could have done. Thompson continued as a traveling executioner for several years, but his lucrative reputation did not last. In December 1944, a new governor of the state was elected, replacing his close friend and original employer Paul Johnson. Since 1976, Mississippi has executed fewer prisoners than six other southern states despite comparable homicide rates. As of November 2021, 22 inmates were executed after 1976. One critic claims that this stems from the inability of poorer counties to afford legal fees for defendants accused of capital crimes. Because death penalty cases are subject to a high standard of review, and there is a constitutional requirement for effective assistance of counsel as a matter of due process of law and subsequent appellate review this has led to a practical and constitutional impediment to its operation. Thank you for watching Death Row.